What's up guys, Frugal BC, and today we are talking about Algorand announcing its roadmap, laying out the roadmap for the next year. And it's got a chess theme, so that's kind of cool. And we're gonna zero in on a couple parts of that, including Dynamic Lambda, which is making, already making Algorand go way faster. We're gonna look at exactly how fast, and we're gonna look at node incentivization. That's right, you are gonna make money for running a node. We're gonna kind of talk a little bit about how that works. Uh, there's still, still a lot of exact details we don't know, but there's quite a bit here to dig through, so. Uh, we're going to get into that on today's Frugal BC. And guys, before we do that, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. You don't have to smash it, you just press it gently. We're here to bring you the truth, whether that's the good, the bad, and everything in between, and we just don't sugarcoat it. That's not what we do on this channel. But fortunately, we have good news today, and it's always nice when we can share some, some positive news. But I'm also not interested in whitewashing anything or making stuff look better than it is. I just present it to you as it is, as it comes to me. So... With that in mind, uh, I'd like to give you a shout out to our sponsors, Non-Fungible Domains. They make those cool uh, incentives, uh, cool uh, wallets that uh, give you the .algo address after your name. Makes it way easier than remembering all those letters and numbers. I use it all. I use mine all the time. Plus, there are vaults and uh, segments and all kinds of other cool stuff that they have uh, options that have available for them. So check them out in the link or description below. And we're brought to you by Fractal Monsters, which is a play-to-earn blockchain game built on algo and uh, you can play it for free or you can buy one of the little critters uh, to to bring other uh, other features into it it's basically a cross between tamagotchi and pokemon with a little bit of smash brothers thrown in so and i just love i love the way these both of these companies i love what they're doing i think, I think they're doing the right thing and uh and providing real value for algorand users so check out both of those below in the description and let's get into today's video so algorand as as promised on my channel now john woods had announced that this was coming on my channel coming on january 17th and that's exactly what happened they've released their roadmap for what's going to happen in the Algorand ecosystem this year and there's a lot of really cool stuff so we're going to dig into it as a whole one of the things I like they kind of they kind of went with the chess theme I think that was creative um I I, I can't really hate it it's it's a really interesting way to do it and I think it just kind of gets a little bit of attention so good good for them I think that's really awesome and then like I said we're going to talk about a couple of things we're going to kind of pull those out and talk about them in depth but let's take a look at what they released so here's uh here's what they they launched and says checkmate we opened 2020 with the Algorand Gambit, our technical roadmap for the year. 2024 marks a pivotal moment for Algorand committed to permissionless blockchain infrastructure while setting new standards in performance and usability. We're going to talk about those too. So uh, they kind of lay it out like this. I'll pull this out. Uh, dynamic round times. They're talking about dynamic Lambda. That's quarter one and by the way happened as well as AlgoKit 2.0, which means we're bringing in Python fully to Algo AlgoKit 2.0, which is awesome. That's going to be a very cool thing. Non-archival relays, consensus incentivization, and P2P gossip network. Let's just roll down a little bit. The dynamic round times, that's our dynamic lambda. Block times will now average less than three seconds. And uh, in fact, I can show you that. Yeah, so this is, uh, so yesterday, this was already live. Like here's the typical block time and you can see it drop to, you know, nothing is over three seconds. And this is good. This got shared around a lot, but you can see that uh, it already had an impact. I don't know if they talk about how it works. Yeah, not, not really. I'm sure they have a, a deeper explanation somewhere else, but basically it's faster. That's what you need to know. It's already going under three seconds, which is pretty cool. And we kind of talked about this, AlgoKit 2.0. We'll have native Python. If you don't know what that is, it's a computer programming language, and it's probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest, to use, but also like one of the most common, and that's why it's a big deal. And if you're confused what these like guy, the Rai Lopez and all this stuff means, th these are just like, uh, I believe chess openings. They may be chess moves, I'm not sure. I, I, I love chess, but I'm also like, I don't really study a lot of the openings and things. And actually, if you're a low level player, I think it's better to uh, study tactics at first anyway. You've all heard of the Queen's Gambit, of course. Yeah, non-archival relays, which means algorithms switching to a higher proportion of relay nodes to non-archival relay nodes. This will make that network greener, more efficient, and significantly reduce operational costs. So that's interesting. Uh, consensus incentivization. We're going to dig into much, much deeper into this, okay? Uh, this will be the first significant upgrade to Algorand's consensus mechanism since inception. Since in 2024, Algorand will directly incentivize participation. In other words, they're going to reward block 
producers, which should drive more people to have nodes. We're going to talk a little bit about that uh, a little bit later. Uh, P2P Gossip Network. Now, this is interesting because uh, you, if, you, if you're familiar with Hedera, it also has a gossip protocol. So there, let's see. So Algorand is going to be shifting away from a relay structure to a P2P peer-to-peer -peer gossip network, similar to how Bitcoin and many other n crypto networks operate. And that will, uh, well, let's see what that says. I think that's yeah, the shift to a P2P network represents a significant step towards a more enduring failure for Algorand where it is where it can operate independently and remain resilient to potential disruptions. And, you know, the only one I know there is the Queen's Gambit. I actually use uh, something called a cow opening when I play, and it's it's surprisingly effective because it looks like you're you kind of make like a little cow with your pieces when you're when you're done with it and you kind of look like you kind of lure the opponent in. it's kind of neat so people kind of like think you're don't know what you're doing and then suddenly you're just destroying them it's kind of cool um it's been a little while i was playing for about six months ago i was playing almost obsessively and then anyway so that's all really cool stuff and i'm excited i like i like the layout i like and i feel like they're doing a lot more towards marketing lately which is really cool they're making short form videos uh, they took a bunch of my stuff with john woods and i'm guessing they're going to do stuff with aj's and john woods which I think is today as I'm recording this. But I want to get into, I watched John Allen Wood's video on uh, how incentives are going to work because there's a couple different models. There's kind of the Bitcoin model where it's sort of a ratcheting down. It's a deflationary. And then there's there's other kinds where it's more formulaic or um, algorithmic or whatever. And they're kind of going for an algorithmic style deflation is what basically what it's going to mean. So you're going to earn less over time. But something else really important that they're adding is they're adding a pool to incentivize this as well. Um, so th so it should be, so it actually should be pretty, pretty, a pretty good idea to run a node if you can do it. Now, one thing I want to say is that I've been looking up the uh, hardware requirements and you do need a pretty new computer, I think, to, to handle this. Uh, the stuff I have basically doesn't, but I have pretty old computers. Uh, nothing, nothing from post-2020, I will say that, including the one behind me. So I, I tried to run a node back there. I just don't think it's, uh, based on what I was reading this morning, I just don't think it could handle it. So it, it would just spin and spin, it just never like finished finished uh, syncing, which is what I heard. If you don't have the right requirements, it just doesn't, it just won't sync. And so that, that's what it kind of looked like happened there. Um, but there's good news because uh, they're, they're pretty sure, and it works this way on other networks, um, John's, John says, them and the team, they're assuming that people are going to have pools. So the way it'll work is you'll be able to stake your algo with somebody else who will then use it on their computer and then you'll get a reward. And I've done this on Cosmos. I've done this on Near, uh, pretty H bar as well. Uh, so they, they, it's possible, and uh, you make money that way. And you don't have to worry about all the setup. It's it can get pretty technical. Um, the one click node worked pretty well, other than like it ran into the hardware requirements. So that's fair. But um, I was looking at like a Caspa node today, just out of curiosity, because the CPUs can run them. And uh, this network, the setup was seemed a little complicated. So <laughs> we'll see about that. I think pooling, you know, usually pay like a little fee. Some some don't even like charge a fee, which is kind of crazy. But others will, uh, you know, charge like one, two, maybe five percent, maybe even ten percent. And uh, usually, usually what'll happen is it'll be kind of built into the wallet. So I don't know if they're going to do that here or. If the pair is going to add that or how that's going to work um, on Algorand, but all that is in the future yet. Uh, now, they also talked about gaming mitigation. And what do I mean by that? Well, it means like people try to people are trying to game the system. You want to try to stop that. Uh, one of the issues is that, and this was from John Allen Woods, he said, if more than 20% of the Algorand that says it's not supposed to be online is not online, um, you could actually have a stall of the blockchain. And so... You don't want that, obviously. So they have so so the network is going to be built so that it uh, doesn't allow you to do that. If you're not online when you say you're supposed to, going to be online, then it will it will kind of kick you off, and you'll have to pay a little bit to get back. So that's something uh, kind of interesting. And then uh, they see pooling kind of as the same thing. Like if pools aren't doing it, it'll be sort of the same incentive structure. And then there's there was one concern that actually wasn't much of a concern, but they felt like bringing it up is the fact that you could possibly modify it a client to propose but not do any of the other work that the blockchain needs. Um, but it seems pretty unlikely because the stuff outside of proposing a block is pretty 
not intense. So it just wouldn't really be worth it to spend all this time to make a, a node that only proposed blocks just because it's like, it's so, so minor anyway, you're not really getting that much gain. So they, they just thought that was pretty minimal. And then one other thing that he talked about, and actually John talked about this on my channel, but now it kind of has more context that there, over time there might be a need to increase the fees that are paid on Algorand. Because right now, right now Algorand produces, the blockchain produces about $2 million in fees every year. And that's not very much. That is not very much at all. So, you know, we want to see this increase. Um, right now it's so cheap. It's like, it's like, you know, fractions of a penny. And he says he wants to keep that to, you know, a minimum. So we wouldn't be talking about a huge increase. He kind of talked about that on my channel too. And he talked about that recently. So just one other aspect that I think is kind of interesting. But overall, I think, uh, I think this is good news. I think, I, I think Algorand is headed in a good direction. I hope this stuff helps the ecosystem overall, you know, and you've got to put this stuff in place and I like to see the innovation, but also like bear in mind when you think about price, it may not have an impact on the price very soon. It might be, you know, a couple of years down the road where you get more and more people coming in. It might help bolster the network and increase demand. So just something to keep in mind. Don't expect this. You can't expect this stuff to change things overnight. But I do think this is a really good direction. I like how they're being open about this and and like they're they're taking marketing seriously now. And I really I really appreciate that because I don't think you can tell the attitude because like when I talked to Sean Ford, who's the former CEO of Algorand Inc., he said, we think the tech sells itself. Well, it doesn't. <laughs> it just doesn't. In crypto especially, it just doesn't. I wish it did. I mean, that'd be great. That's why we're all here, right? Uh, we love the tech of Algorand. I think it works really well, but uh, you, need, you need a little pizzazz too. It's just uh, it's just part of showmanship. So uh, look at uh, Apple make great products, but you know what? Steve Jobs is a great showman too. So just something to keep in mind. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Glad to be able to share some good news with you today. And I'm Frugal BC. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the future. Thank <laughs> you.